brought to Chicago to help them take the next step. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of the WNBA playoffs presented by Google. Game three of the best of five semis coming your way from downtown Chicago, Illinois. The top seeded Connecticut Sun led by MVP John Quill Jones in town to take on the sky in a pivotal game three. Yep, Candace Parker, the hometown kid, is back. The Mercury and Aces also not at a game, at a game apiece. will play their game three at three Eastern time on ABC. And we welcome you to Chicago. Pam Ward along with LaChina Robinson. Mraz golden Woodhead will join us shortly. First game, a double overtime thriller that Chicago won. But game two, boy, it was the Alyssa Thomas show when it counted. Yeah, after losing game one, Connecticut wanted to be more physical and aggressive against Chicago. And when you add those two words together, you get Alyssa Thomas. The 6'2 point forward for Connecticut had 15 points, 11 rebounds, 6 assists in that game two victory. Coming off that Achilles tear, she is back to putting pressure on teams with her tenacity, her relentless effort on both ends of the floor, and that sets the tone for this team. And the fourth quarter, Alyssa Thomas on her own outscored Chicago as they took game number two. Connecticut Sun and the Sky, neither one has won a championship. Let's go over now to Ron's Golden Wooden. Yes, and two-time champion Dewana Bonner is trying to share with the Sun what it takes to win a championship. She told me, I tell my team, we've got to be a team of we know, not we hope. When you hope you win or you hope a shot goes in, that's when it goes wrong because you put too much pressure on yourself. We've been in our heads letting pressure get to us. we got to be a team of we know we can do this because we've built a championship mentality all year. And this is the Connecticut Sun team that won its last 14 regular season games before dropping game one of this series. And this is the starting lineup for Jasmine Thomas. You cannot overstate how important she is running the show for the Sun. There's your MVP. This is a really good defensive team. In fact, the best in the WNBA this year stats-wise. Courtney Vandersloot, Candace Parker highlighting the starters. Kalia Copper, Ali Quigley, and Azarae Stevens rounding things out. Copper has been tremendous in the last couple of years playing for Chicago. Chicago wearing their black uniforms with the blue pinstripes. And John Paul Jones actually lost the tip to Stevens, but Connecticut controls it. Jasmine Thomas guarded by Vandersloot out on the perimeter. Great matchup to look out is what we're seeing here with Parker and Brianna Jones. And then the steal by Copper. She has been lightning for this team. And that started with outstanding defense by Candace Parker using her quickness. Brianna Jones has the girth and the toughness in the paint, but Parker can use her speed and her length to be disrupted. And Candace admits that the physicality edge will go to Brianna Jones. There's the MVP. John Quill Jones with the miss. Azaray Stevens could not handle it cleanly, the pass from Parker and Candace kind of chuckling about that mishap. This is a great way for Chicago to start on the defensive end and Kalia Copper is great at getting in the passing lanes and once she gets out and going with her athleticism in the open floor, she's hard to stop. Chicago definitely an up-tempo kind of team. Big mess match, but quickly comes over to double Jones. Jasmine Thomas a little bit shy, quickly, and this is what they do. Even Stevens is able to get out on the break, but Jones is able to come in and affect the shot. Outstanding transition defense by Connecticut because it looked like Chicago had a layup. All five players for Chicago will run the floor as you saw. Jones got bumped, nothing called. And now Candace Parker. Copper gives it up to Quigley, who gave up the three for the two. Chicago in that game, too, only scoring 68 points. And Jones just enveloped underneath. That should be a backcourt violation. Nope, yes it is. Thought it might have been tipped. 
James Wade, third year as a head coach and general manager of the Chicago Sky team. Has taken to the playoffs every year and started off with wins over Dallas and a very impressive win against Minnesota that we witnessed a week ago to uh, get to the semis. Yeah, he had his team ready for the playoffs, but he definitely kept mentioning the word will in game three, that his team had to impose their will, in particular, keeping Connecticut off the offensive glass. Parker over Jones, good start. And that's been one of the difference makers for Chicago. When Candace Parker is hitting the outside shot, it adds that next layer to her versatility. It doesn't allow the defense to focus in on the paint. That's where Chicago wants to go. Connecticut still looking for its first points. Jones just bullies her way into the paint to get the bucket. She's seeing a crowd every time she touches the ball. But bullying is a good word. She has to be more physical in this matchup on the offensive end because Chicago's being physical with her. Coming off just a four-point effort in game two, but Chicago's dialing up the threes. I mentioned a moment ago that Chicago wants to get into the paint. None better than Courtney Vandersloot with her vision, even on the collapse of the defense, finds Kalia Copper who's ready to put it up. Andersloot led the league in assists yet again this season, five in a row and six during her terrific career. All the way over to Rion January. No more for her defensive prowess, but she hits it from beyond the arc. Well, Connecticut did a nice job of forcing Chicago to get into defensive rotation on one side of the floor, and then they find the open man on each side. Well, Delana Bonner thought she had a clean block. Cheryl Forrest, Cheryl Cruz, and Randy Richardson, our officials this afternoon. And here is your 2021 WNBA Coach of the Year, Kurt Miller, winning it for the second time. Didn't even hit him. Tierra, you got to call the same as your partner then. For <laughs> Get in the game like never before with AT&T 5G Game View. You can get a customized AR view on your smartphone, talking immersive live updates on your favorite WNBA team. IT is exclusively in the WNBA app under the More menu. Download it right now. I'll go off to a good start in this game, but off to a good start in game two before Connecticut's comeback. John Quill Jones working. Wow. Outstanding awareness to come back to the left side, feeling the help defense closing in. And then Jones gets a rebound, average a double-double. In fact, led the league in rebounding this season. And an offensive foul call as Parker hits the deck. John Quill Jones, the MVP, only four points in game two, but she has come ready. Look at the use of that pivot foot. Went away from the crowd of the defense back to the left side. Boy, so skilled. And so is John Quill Jones from on her. Let's go over to Roz. You know, John Quill, before the game, admitted to me that I have to be more aggressive offensively. She said in game two, I didn't settle into the game well. She was too much in her head. She said she thinks this series will be won inside, and the team that wins the inside battle has won the game. So she's trying to impose her will. And there was a good opportunity for... The Sun almost got the shot clock violation, but a good offensive rebound by Azaray. Stevens kept it going. Parker drives. Stevens blocked by Jones. And now the shot clock will go off. Really impressed with the interior defense of Connecticut. And that actually started with John Quill Jones on the perimeter, willing to pressure Candace Parker. They're really trusting their help defense on the backside, and it's showing up in the paint. Connecticut Sun leading the league both in Scoring defense and field goal percentage defense. Teams averaging just under 70 points a game during the regular year. And here comes number 25, instant energy, Alyssa Thomas. Coming back from an Achilles tear that happened in January overseas, playing and actually practicing for a game at the Czech Republic. And she doesn't waste any time, misses the shot. Thomas with a double-double off the bench in game two. Huge fourth quarter as January got a piece of copper for the foul. Going 
Alyssa Thomas coming back. With all the hustle, look at that number, the numbers for her again off the bench. Big fourth quarter, quickly able to put one home. Jones with so much versatility. At 6'6. Six, six. Thomas into John Quarry. A little bit too much. Connecticut really looking to get John Quell Jones going, coming off from that four points in game two. Once again, look at the defense of Connecticut. They have recovered so well under the bucket. The stars are out in Chicago today. John Quell Jones, the MVP, getting it to go to the bucket. Kansas has got two MVPs behind her name. Parker from Long Range. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA playoffs is presented by Google, official WNBA changemaker and proud advocate of women in sports. And in part by Taco Bell. And AT&T 5G, fast, reliable, and secure. Welcome back, John Quell Jones and the Sun trailing in this game, but they're a very good defensive team, and you've seen some good defense from them already in this game. In the paint. I mean, they've recovered well because Chicago wants to get down, score early in the possession. They've gotten some good passes inside, but the recovery defense has been better. Alyssa Thomas drew the foul as she sliced through the lane. That was one thing that James Wayne wanted to try avoiding is fouling Thomas, sending her to the free throw line. She's like a like a contact magnet. And you like the call by Kurt Miller to give her some space, to get her a running start, to use that speed against Chicago's length, because they definitely have more size on the inside. And that very unusual free throw form. This is a player who has had both shoulders, injuries with both of them, has tweaked that free throw throughout her career, and now she basically just, it's like a one-handed shot put. Shot put? I gotta, I gotta think about that for a minute. You gotta think about, you know, yeah, you know, know, you know, about without the, the spin. Put. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's not spinning, now that would be spectacular. Another play underneath, and goodness, Dewana Bonner has been called for another foul when she thought she had a block. That's two on her. Allie Quigley here coming off of screening and a beautiful pass. I saw all ball at the top. It must have been somebody from the back. But I can tell you that Chicago is not shooting a high percentage in the lane. Fall has it rim out. And the sky with four points in the paint at the first break, the first time out, but they had missed five of their seven shots, but block shots figured into that. Connecticut just eight points so far with under four minutes to go in the first quarter. Thomas not gonna shoot from out there. The double on Jones, swinging around to Jasmine Thomas. And that wasn't even a clean pass out of the double by Jones. Breon January whipped that out. And Jasmine Thomas's ability to knock down shots was a big difference from game one to game two. And her defense always is stellar. Second team all defense this season. Finishes, she's got five in a row. Jasmine Thomas is just the consummate leader, professional. Never takes plays off. Just such a true leader. Really the heart and soul of this Sun team. Quigley, oh, wide open. And Quigley has struggled some from long range. I feel like she's due for a breakout game from three-point line, but can't get that one to go. She was one of six from distance in game two after hitting 44% in her previous seven games. Dewana Bonner, such a tough matchup. No matter where she is on the floor, 6-4, can drive it, can shoot it. That was her first shot of the game. Inside, 
do fall, nothing doing. Bonner comes away with it. Well, here out of Auburn. And there's the contact drawn again. Dewana Bonner will get to the free throw line here off the drive, but a little screen there by John Quill Jones and Kalia Copper. No chance on guarding that because she's already giving up a few inches to Bonner, and so you get behind her, and it's just tough to recover. with a couple of championship rings with Phoenix, including in 2014, which is the last time the Mercury won a championship. They're coming up at 3 Eastern time on ABC at home in their game three against Vegas after Diana Taurasi put on an incredible show in game two. Boy, oh boy, that is going to be quite a game. Billy Abir in the history of his career is 3-0 coming off of playoff losses by 20 or more. And I'm sure he was more than disappointed with his team's defense in game two, but all credit to Phoenix. This is a 9-0 Connecticut run in just a minute, so they have taken a lead. Just under two minutes, I should have said. And here's another turnover, Connecticut's bread and butter. Mismatch with Sloot on John Quell. Heidemann just into the game, misses a three. Copper comes away with it. Diamond the Shields also is in for Chicago. Coming off the bench after starting the first 22 games of the season. More good post defense. And then Thomas knocks it away. Alyssa. The activity defensively of Connecticut early has been really impressive. Again, I, I just think Chicago has blown some opportunities right around the cup. Some looks that they need to be putting in just to get their team confidence and some some flow. Only 13 points with a minute and 37 left to go in the first quarter. Usually Chicago is a team that can light it up. They're third in the league in scoring during the regular season. 29% from the field right now is Chicago. Yeah, it's not going to get it done. Now the ball coming the other way. The fact that game two when Chicago only scored 68 points. It's only the third time this year they were under 70 points. The other two in the regular season against L.A. They lost both those games, and neither game did Chicago have Candace Parker. Jones taking Dosa to the hole. No answer. The footwork, the size, the length. Now they give it up. The Shields with the finish, and that breaks a drought. Chicago had scored only once in their last dozen trips before Copper found Diamond. We'd love to see Chicago shooting fourth quarter of game two and first quarter of game one. They've been miserable. Only shot 20% in the fourth quarter of game two. Jasmine Thomas from the other side. Charles tried to keep it alive and did. At 6'6", six, six, John Quill Jones has the handle to work her way to the bucket and then the footwork and the long arms, that wingspan helps her to get that finish right up over Dolson. And already she has outdone herself from that four point performance in game two, but they still won, which has to be heartening for Sun fans and disheartening for those who follow the sky. Heidemann, part of that energy group off the bench they for were, Kurt Miller, pardon me. They were so good in game two. Heidemann, Kyla Charles, obviously Alyssa Thomas. And this group plays at a different pace on both ends. They can pressure more on defense, on offense. They can pull you out and drive by you. And Chicago's offense has really been scuffling, but then with six seconds left on the shot clock, a foul. And one thing Kurt Miller said to us in practice was, they haven't seen our best defense. We have yet to play our best defensive game. And early in this one, they are definitely causing Chicago some trouble. First foul on John Quell. They did have a foul to give. Quigley got hit as she curled around, got the pass from Lexi Brown.
So Allie Quigley heads to the free throw line. Allie Quigley has not missed a free throw in a playoff game since 2014. She's just been so steady <laughs> until Pam, you know, just. But she got it. You know what's coming up? More playoff action on ABC at 3 Eastern. It's Vegas at Phoenix, and we'll have a doubleheader on Wednesday. Connecticut at Chicago, 8 Eastern from this building. We'll be back in Phoenix on both those games on ESPN. As the quarter comes to a close, boy, Chicago got off to a good start, but then that Connecticut defense. Well, how about the class of 2016? The WNBA, John Quell Jones asserting herself early, and then Kalia Copper was in that class as well, draining the three. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the WNBA playoffs presented by Google. I'm Roz Golden Wood here with John Quell Jones. John Quell, you told me you wanted to be more aggressive. What are the shots you're committed to working for on offense? Just going to the going to the basket strong, um, you know, letting them foul me and not really shying away from the contact. On, how would you gauge the physicality and defense that you guys want to execute here so far? I think we're, I think it's a good start, but I think we can take it up to another notch. So um, it's a good start for us, but we have another level we can take it to. What's another notch? Being stronger, being more aggressive, making them turn the ball over. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. And Rod, what we see early in this game is the intentional offense by John Quill Jones to attack the physicality. Kurt Miller said she cannot become a two guard when they get physical with her. She's six six, and she's got to use that. Nazare Stevens called for the foul for Chicago, who led by as many as six in the first quarter, but then only got five points in the last four minutes. They had four turnovers in the last three minutes, and you see the. The, the Chicago shooting and you reference for the, the carryover from the fourth quarter in game two, which was the, the big uh, turning point to the first quarter in game one, not good for Chicago. And no offense to two guards, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are tough too. No, we but, love them. Uh, and it looks like Thomas is grabbing that left shoulder as she runs back up the floor. Hopper draws the foul. But when you're six six with the skill set of somebody like John Quill Jones who Kurt Miller got up off the bench and then told her to sit back down. Uh, you know, you want her to, to use more of, that, more of that body. But she's got the ability to be a finesse player. She can bring the ball down. She can stroke the three. I mean, her skill set is so complete. And in this series in particular, though, she has to be physical because they were more physical with her. And um, I, don't, I don't know that Chicago loves it on that end of the floor. Copper goes one of two after being fouled by Brianna Jones and the most improved player in the league this year, Jones, didn't even take a shot in the first quarter. Well, you can see a change in defense by Chicago on Jones, more crowding. Stevens gets it over to Quigley. Chicago's hit only one field goal in the last six and a half minutes. Dolson for a good look. Usually she's money from around that free throw line. And you feel like Connecticut needs to take advantage of this right now because Chicago is clearly out of a flow on offense. Credit Connecticut, but they need to try to stretch this lead yeah, before only, Chicago figures it out. Yeah, pardon me, they're only up by now five as Thomas got that basket. And with Chicago in this prolonged scoring drought. The second chance points is something that hurt Chicago in that game too, and that was the type of possession where they've got to secure the rebound and finish the play. Good work by Azure Stevens against Brianna Jones on the baseline. Lisa Thomas gets it over to Jones. He still can't get a good look at the basket. Quigley might have gotten away with a kick there. And Chicago's turn to get the shot clock violation. And Candace Parker coming back in. Spelling Dolson. Candace Parker had some really good moments early in this game. I thought defensively on Jones. She did a nice job as Jones has tried to out physical Parker. Got a good look from long range, but you just feel all in all like Chicago's got to hit their stride on the offensive end. 
Got off to a decent start before they cooled off. Copper in and out. Parker just into the game. She told us before the game, rebounding will be the big difference. She got a big offensive board, and that led to the Stevens three. Azaray Stevens and Candace Parker work so well together. Their chemistry has even improved as the season has gone on, and Parker got healthy. Parker already with four rebounds in this game. Ivan, that's a tough look under the basket. Fifth rebound for CP, but then she threw it away. Jones just can't get anything going on offense. But did you see four players? There were four players pursuing Jones. Helping Candace Parker, taking some of the pressure off of Parker to guard her one-on-one. -on -one. Right on January, her turn to hit the deck. But she's got that black belt in karate. You see how she, <laughs> you see how she popped right back up? Oh, yeah, that's nothing. That didn't phase her. She's just been a solid player out of Arizona State. Brianna Jones still chasing her first point. And you'll take that if you're Chicago. That's a low percentage shot for Brianna Jones because she does not have two feet of the paint. But look at the crowd right here. Four players. The help of Courtney Vandersloot. A lot of respect for Brianna Jones there and what she can do in finishing around the bucket. And you don't want Parker to get in foul trouble. Bonner hits it. Connecticut had missed seven of their last eight shots before Bonner scored on the inbounds play. Gets them back on top. Quigley posting up high to man. I like the sets that James Wade has implemented this season, putting Allie Quigley in the post. You didn't realize, you know she can stroke the three, but she also can find an angle on that turnaround jump shot. It's been really consistent from there. Three-time Three-point shooting champion at All-Star Games. It is diversified. Bonner lost control of the basketball, but still was able to recover and get a shot off. Timeout in a tie ball game, game three of the best of five semi. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA playoffs is presented by Google, official WNBA changemaker and proud advocate of women in sports. And in part by American Express. See what you can expect when you're with Amex Platinum. A physical series, I think, on both sides. Uh, that's what, you know, we pride ourselves on, especially defensively. Uh, we're going to try to be physical. We're going to try to get up in you. We're going to try to disrupt. And they're trying to do the same. They, they run it right back at us. So it's been really physical. I uh, definitely feel it after the game a day or two later. But uh, we're going to recover, and we're going to go back at it. We're going to be just as physical. I think that's just something that we've been doing all year long. It is absolutely the identity of the Connecticut Sun. Alyssa Thomas said, we have to make them feel us. And speaking of which, Brianna Jones probably felt that hit, but you couldn't tell on the finish. First points for Jones, who averaged 15 points during the regular season. Andrew Sleep. Oh, Lazarus Stevens stick, sticking with it. You have to. I mean, as many as easy buckets as Chicago has missed, they've got to stay after the offensive glass. You see the plus five in offensive rebounds so far in this tie ball game. Under five minutes to go in the second quarter. Whoever wins this will be one win away from the finals. Bonner rid herself of Quigley and then buried the three. And that started because Diamond to Shields, there was a, a two players waiting for John Quill Jones. So whenever you get two defenders in that situation, you move the ball, you're going to find the open spot. John Quill Jones catches the ball here. You see there's Diamond to Shields and Azaray Stevens. How did she get that pass to Dewana Bonner? I don't know, but Bonner had enough time to tie her shoe, get a bite to eat, <laughs> have a drink, and get the three up. And John Quill Jones with that cross court pass picked up the assist. Bonner, the Shields got over there eventually. And another foul. Second one on Azaray Stevens for Chicago. Oh, 
I'm impressed with the way Azure Stevens has played down the stretch of the regular season and into the playoffs. Boy, she is more of a gritty player than she was when she first started in this league. Go to her career in Dallas. Well, absolutely stuffed copper shot. Kept it in bounds. Here's Jasmine Thomas. Jones taking away. That's a couple of nice plays by the Shields to get steals. But then she coughed it up to Bonner. And fouled it. Really good hesitation there by Bonner. Oh, no. pain right now she took a direct hit to the face from diamond to shields and the shield was trying to make a play on the ball now what the officials will look at here is if there's a wind up by the shields As the officials continue to look at the replays, Juana Bonner shaking up. So right here, the shield is going for the ball, but see how she brought her arm back? Sometimes a windup can be, she was going for the ball, absolutely. I mean, if I'm the officials, to me it's incidental contact. I mean, she was trying to get a block, but again, a flagrant foul call can be triggered when if that arm goes back on a windup. Juana Bonner is three inches taller than Diamond DeShields, but 30 pounds lighter. So right away, just getting hit with DeShields' body, it was hard enough. The call on the floor has been upgraded to a flagrant foul penalty one. I get it. I get it because of the windup. That's the trigger. It's not whether or not she's going for the ball. That's part of it. But when she brings that arm back, the officials can call a flagrant. A flagrant. But I would have ruled that incidental contact. So maybe that's why I'm not an official. Yeah, so why you're over here. And the officials in the stands agree with you. But Dewana Bonner, Going to the free throw line, Connecticut will also get possession of the ball. And remember, she was in the act of shooting when the foul occurred. A lot of courage from Bonner staying in this game because it was obvious that she was in a lot of pain. In a physical series so far, that one was ruled a flagrant foul on the Shields, who stays out there. Still guarding Bonner. Took away from her. High point advantage for Connecticut. Stevens. Uh, did everything right except finish. Thomas trying to get it to John Paul Jones, who could not quite handle it. Good defense by Chicago. They were pursuing Jasmine Thomas there. Well, she thought she had to float that pass up a little bit higher than she needed to. And there was defense, some help on the backside. There's a beautiful look into Candace Parker. Just the second field goal for Parker. To get him two within three. Great read by Parker, feeling that her defense was not in position to stick with her cuts to the bucket. Quigley brings the double on John Quill Jones, kicked around a little bit by January. That's what you want to happen on a double. Quigley 
Contact, but no foul. Vandersloot picks it up, has Parker. Quigley with the trail three, just a little bit short, but a big offensive board for Azaray Stevens. Ball was deflected, so no backcourt violation. Shot clock did not reset. Parker's got to get the one away, and she does! Somehow able to get in the lane and then put up the scooper. Candace Parker with some magic with the shot clock winding down. A couple of buckets from Candace Parker. The up and under, the step through move. Beautiful. On the WNBA Halftime Report presented by State Farm, Coach Carolyn Pack, Renee Montgomery, myself. We're jumping into the next game. Uh, we got Aces and uh, Mercury. That's going to be really interesting. But, guys, this one looks to be another installment in what has been a great series. So far, Coach, what stands out? Chicago Sky is going to the glass. Esri Stevens, by herself, has seven offensive rebounds. On the other side? For me, I think uh, Connecticut Sun, if they can get that defense, three-and-a-half drought by Chicago Sky, keep it there. That three-and-a-half-minute drought was in the first quarter. Pam, LaChina, and Ross, can they pick that back up on defense? Absolutely. Of course they can. I mean, what kind of question is that? <laughs> John Paul Jones with the miss. Roz was listening into the last Sun Hunter. John, John Paul Jones was very vocal asking her team to move to open. John Paul Jones was very vocal asking her team to move to open spots when Chicago sends that double team. It was Alyssa Thomas who encouraged her, though, to face her so that she could see better. But Coach Miller gave the best down. I mean, I like the discussion because there is a lot of crowding on John Paul Jones with the traps and her teammates absolutely have to move, have to put themselves in position where they can be seen. Three by Bonner ends a 7-0 Chicago run that was capped by Quigley's three on the other end. Coach Kurt Miller coming into this series in this game was concerned about the pace of Chicago. They do like to get it going. Oh, Parker! Call for the foul after the miss. Wow, that would have been a terrific finish. Coming up next, we remind you about the second game of our WNBA playoff semifinal doubleheader. It's over on ABC. Asia Wilson and the Aces taking on the one and only Diana Taurasi and the Phoenix Mercury. ESPN app has it as well. How will Vegas respond after they got blown out in their own building? You have to find an answer for Brittany Griner. She is the best pl player still standing in the semifinals on in, on any team. Including Diana Taurasi? Right now, Brittany Griner, yes. When you look at the games that Phoenix has played, she's been the X factor. Now, last game, <laughs> Diana did show out. <laughs> However, a little bit. It starts with Brittany Griner. Yeah, and Griner affects things more so on both ends of the floor. Really, really looking forward to that coming up. And this game is over. I'll run ABC combo. So the three-pointers start to fall a little bit for Chicago. And that started because Jasmine Thomas got beat, needed help. And that opened up the three-point line. Very little difference between the two clocks. Boy, Connecticut's got to move the ball on that high hedge. January. Called for the travel on the up and down. Courtney Vandersloot doing what she does best. Jasmine Thomas gets beat. DeWanna Bonner has to help. And on the recovery, Kalia Copper, who people were wondering if she could hit the three coming out of college. And Candace Parker with the last effort doesn't go. Chicago ending the quarter and the half on a 10 to three run. Honor and Copper, the respective leading scorers as we get you to the studio for the halftime report after a break. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the WNBA playoffs presented by Google. Where in Chicago? Look who's in the house. DeMar DeRozan, 
new Chicago Bull NBA supporting WNBA. Love to see it. And we have seen that. We love seeing that with all the support across the lines. Pam Ward along with China Robinson. Ross Golden Wood with us as well. And in that first half, not a lot of scoring, but we did see some three-point punch. Yeah, Chicago struggled in the paint early against Connecticut's defense, but they were able to stretch the floor with the three. Of course, with the kick-out opportunities after dribble penetration right here, Kalia Copper gets a little piece of the paint, forces John Paul Jones to help. Ball comes out to the three, and Allie Quigley is so important to this team because she can stretch the floor. Great vision on this three from Courtney Vandersloot getting Kalia Copper open. Dewana Bonner just too much help. And these are your leading scores for Chicago, but the adjustment, they weren't going to get what they wanted inside. Connecticut was very focused on the interior defensively, so their ability to knock down the three has been the difference maker. Now, what will Connecticut do to make adjustments in this game? Let's head over to Roz Golden Wood, who lives to, or talks, excuse me, to Kurt Miller. Coach Miller told me it's the little things that will make the difference. He said Chicago was on the offensive glass, but we should do that too. We missed 20 shots and only had one offensive rebound, and we're turning it over. His keys for the second half, take care of the ball and get on the glass. You have to value the possessions. Both teams got a little sloppy in that first half. There's got to be better execution. Not turning it over, finishing easy buckets. All important down the stretch. And Chicago out rebounded Connecticut by 10 in the first half. Connecticut had one offensive rebound, eight of them for Chicago, seven of them alone for Azurae Stevens, who is getting close to her career high in rebounds. You mentioned what a difference she has made in this season. Stevens starting towards the latter part of the year. Meanwhile, John Paul Jones has been, we went, need to put her on a milk cart. She's been missing in action. Well, part of it is beautiful seal by Brianna Jones. I mean, she gave you an angle. She gave herself perfect position to finish that easily. A clinic. Hopper just talked about her three-point shoot, and there she goes. We asked Candace Parker, how can they take more pressure off of Courtney Vandersloot, who struggles some with turnovers in game two? She said when Kalia Copper gets going, that takes pressure off of Slew. They wanted to see her be aggressive. She has been today. Honor. Her turn to put up the three. Shaking up a little bit after a hard foul by Diamond to Shields in the second quarter, but is hanging in there. Oh, Courtney Vandersloot haven't even mentioned that triple-double that she had in game one of this series. 18 assists in the double overtime win. But had as many assist turnovers as assists in game two. Jones coming up with the rebound. John Quell Jones, meanwhile, has gone 12 minutes without scoring a point. The MVP has only taken one shot during that time. And some of it is the, is the doubling. You know, they're sending a lot of defensive attention to Jones. But in the meantime, Dewana Bonner's going to take advantage of that. Boy, from the outside, the rim attack, she's showing us all aspects of her game. In the last couple of quarters now, Jonquil Jones, in the last six quarters, excuse me, including all of game two, she's only scored 10 points. Copper with a chance at an old-fashioned three-point play. Kalia Copper is dialed in. She is the heartbeat of the Chicago Sky team with her effort and her ability to do this. Takes the bump, goes baseline, and in the previous games, James Wade said she's getting bumped off of her line. We're not getting calls. Well, that time she focused, finished, and gets to the charity strike. Roz has more on Copper. Yeah, well, Kalea Copper works on that. She works with assistant coach Olaf Fang on different finishes, like reverse finishes, or going to the right side with finishing on the left, or Euro steps to avoid the charge. She told me, I even work on my hang time to get ready for the in-game shots I hit. Hard work paying off January with the three. And good patience by Connecticut. January has a couple of threes this afternoon. Connecticut bounces back on top. Quigley, here we go. I mean, the three-point line is wide open. Step up if you will. Second three for Quigley, who joins Copper in double figures. How did Jasmine Thomas get that pass to Jones? 
And again, Jones just understands body positioning, how to use her strength. Brianna Jones, the most improved player, made a big leap forward last year in the bubble when John Quell Jones opted out, took advantage of that opportunity and just built on it this season. January, doing what she has done all career, and that's chase it down, but they couldn't hold on to the possession. Vandersloot with another offensive rebound for Chicago. Parker against John Quell Jones. What a matchup, and CP wins it. Parker's been unstoppable in the middle of the floor. We saw a couple possessions right before the half. When she catches it in the middle of the floor, you can't help there. It's hard to help, and she's taking advantage of the matchup. Jones passed up that shot to get it out to the perimeter. John Quell Jones' first shot since the second quarter. And she's not afraid to go get it off the glass. It's not, not all about touches. Sometimes you got to find your way to have an impact, especially when the defense is honing in on you. Eight points now for John Quell. There's a foul underneath. A couple of superstars here. A China. I mean, Parker's been so good. The middle of the floor, John Quell Jones will struggle to guard that because she doesn't have the foot speed. And then on the ball reversal, shot goes up. Jones, wingspan. They have three MVPs between them. Desiree Stevens. Put some good looks underneath, but just can't finish. She's missed 10 of her 13 shots. Wow, John Quell to Brianna. Good Jones action. A different Brianna Jones. Absolutely. In this third quarter. And some of it is that because they're hitting shots, it's hard to bring the crowd to help out. And she's drawing a lot of attention in that first half. Quigley, one of the best. Tied up again. Game three of the best of five semi. Parker guarding Jones. Quigley comes with the double. Bonner passed up the three for the two. She thought she got hit on the head and a foul should have been called. What a game. Rain and threes in Chicago now tied up. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA playoffs presented by Google is brought to you by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, and secure. Time now for today's Did You Know, presented by Google for the search. We want to know who is the youngest MVP in WNBA history. Yeah. This isn't right. I mean, this, this, this is, is lady, our, the only rookie to win it. Yeah, but our, this is our production crew setting us up, okay? Because <laughs> they're going to show you Candace Parker, which was my initial guess. Yes, a good guess. But I'm not going to tell you whether that's right or wrong. I'll just say, don't let the shot for you. Ah, it might be a false clue. There's Parker against Jones, who won the MVP this year. Candace threw it away. 51-51. So the Google search, the youngest MVP, and the answer is? It is Lauren Jackson, which was my second pick. I did. But by only four, I mean, what's that, 43 days? Yeah, but it makes sense because Parker was a rookie. However, it's LJ. And LJ was a rookie at the age of 19 because she was Australian. She could enter sooner than the uh, Americans. Yeah, or the, so you, yeah. you gotta take that international factor into, into play. But still, Lauren Jackson is pretty good. Right? I think she's good. <laughs> good. Hall of Famer. You can come up with a better word. And you know Candace Parker's heading to Hall of Fame. 50-50 balls. That's uh, Allie Quigley before the game was talking about how important that would be, and her Chicago Skies seem to be getting to more of them. We felt like that was the difference. You know, we were talking about all the numbers from game two, but they thought 50-50 ball, especially Candace Parker. She was like, you know, we got we to gotta get there. We have to assert ourselves. High ball game. What a huge game this is. They were just best of five series. Stephanie Dolson's only played four minutes, but comes in to spell Parker. 
And Dalton has come into the game in this series in times when Bree Jones has gotten going. But she could match her in terms of strength and power. And speaking of Bree Jones, she has just picked up her fourth foul for Connecticut. Brianna Jones, the league's most improved player, going to have to come out as we take a look at the upcoming playoff schedule. We don't have to wait long. It's at the top of the hour in Phoenix. It's Vegas and Phoenix on ABC. Then we'll have a doubleheader Wednesday on ESPN, starting with Connecticut, Chicago at 8 Eastern. And we'll be back in Phoenix for that lively series. Go to WNDA.com or visit the WNDA app. Shout out to Chris Paul purchasing tickets for the Phoenix Mercury fans to attend the game. 500 tickets. That's love. Playing that game at Arizona State. Alyssa Thomas came in and right away put up one of those patented one-handed shots. Thomas coming back after a tremendous double-double in game two off the bench. She is now four for seven from three. Missed that aspect of her game in game two, which changes the spacing defensively when she's knocking down shots. She's hit three of those threes in this quarter. She missed five of six of them in that game two loss you just met, uh, referenced. Alyssa Thomas, this is what she does. All energy, all the time. And she's going to change the, the uh, rebounding and 50-50 ball ratio. Just never stops. And she's always the smaller player at that power forward spot. I mean, they've got Dolson, Azare Stevens, players with a lot more size. Dolson just popped it up to Jasmine Thomas. Charge back by And now Chicago motors back. The shield's blocked and then missed the follow. End to end action. What a recovery from Dewana Bonner. Now on the switch momentarily, the Shield's able to get back on defense. Shot clock at five, and a foul out on the perimeter. Allie Quigley can hit threes, but she can also play some D. Everyone else trailing, don't worry about it, I got it. Kyla Charles thought she was in free, but Quigley gets a fingertip on it. I'm sure her old coach, Doug Bruno, who's sitting sideline, appreciate that. Former coach. Her old coach. <laughs> old, <laughs> former. I didn't mean old, old age. Old. See, don't yeah. say that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. So he, he's sitting there, so is Joe McEwen from Northwestern. Come to a lot of these Sky games. Now the shot clock. He is really skinny. Dolson tipped it away. Charles rescued the possession. That's a backbreaker. Wow. Kyla Charles. Second year out of Maryland. Connecticut has a lot of Terps. Which, as you mentioned to me off camera, is why they're so good. You know what? That wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stephanie Dawson. How about Courtney Vandercoop keeping her dribble alive as the defense was pursuing her so much poise? Heidemann. One of the energy players off the bench. Dewana Bonner, what a game she is having. And she's very vocal yelling, let's go to her teammates as she goes back. Talked about how she's expanded that role, being a more vocal leader coming from a Phoenix team that had a lot of strong personalities. Dolson buries it. Courtney Vandersloot is in her bag. Really facilitating. The Chicago offense. So after a murky first half, this has been an entertaining third quarter. Sloot has yet to score, but does have 10 assists. Heidemann on the switch, guarded by the much taller Dolson. Put it up and put it in, Dolson. Frustrated. Sloot, giving it up to the Shields, he could not bring it home the maestro the head of the snake Courtney Vandersloo using a little screen shot fake for the finish for Dolson and they're connecting another shot 
Welcome back to Chicago, Sun Up 3. I'm Roz Gold on Wooda here with Kalia Copper. You guys have a balanced attack, but where do you have to be conscious of making sure you stay assertive? I just gotta take what the defense give me. Um, not try to overdo it, but just really take what the defense is giving me and try to create plays for my team. It's been a tight game. What can help separate your team in the fourth quarter? We have to rebound. Like they're getting second chance points. They're they're getting on, hopping on the glass really hard. So we have to box out our player, even the guards. We have to go in there and get them. Thank you. Thank you. Connecticut with more second chance points, even though Chicago has more offensive rebounds. And I tell you what, since Alyssa Thomas came into this game, right in that third quarter, things have turned a little bit now with a five point lead. Pam Moore, Dechana Robinson, and Roz Golden Wood. Joining you from Chicago, game three of this best of five semi. Whoever wins will be up two games to one as Ray Stevens with two points. He had struggled scoring in the paint before that one went in, but has been rebounding the ball really well. Charles to Thomas. January wanted the ball, left open in the corner. Hit it. We have seen some outstanding shooting from long range from these two teams tonight. Especially in that third quarter. There were only two turnovers in that third quarter when there were 19 combined in the first half. The six-point lead is Connecticut's largest, and the Shields fouls Charles. Breon January has hit some timely buckets in this series. You see the attention that Alyssa Thomas draws, dribbles away out of it in the strength of Thomas to zip that pass to January, giving her enough time to get it off before the defense gets there. Breon January has three threes, Bonner four of five from out there. Crucial time in this game, the six-point advantage. And Alyssa Thomas again with the great pass, this time to Jones. When we talk about the point forward ability of Alyssa Thomas, it's usually in transition, but on those last two possessions, you see her vision, her patience, her IQ all coming into play. And you see the 10 to two run. Quigley fouled by January, who begs to differ. That is a matchup to watch down the stretch of this one as Allie Quigley has gotten some good looks from three. Breon January, an elite defender. Boy, and she has been now on her 13th year out of Arizona State. They are going to check to make sure this was a two point or three point attempt by Allie Quigley. It's a three. It is a three, but I'm looking for the contact. I couldn't tell if that was ball, the floor, confirm, three point. ball or arm. Quigley heading to the free throw line. Guess what we have coming up? There she is, Diana Tarazi, 37 points in 27 minutes, including eight threes and that thrilling win. Not so thrilling if you're an Aces fan because they kind of got thrashed, but uh, Tarazi coming up at three Eastern on ABC. Time for today's most searched, presented by Google. Fans in the first half searching for, speaking of Diana Taurasi, it was up 460% globally because of what Diana Taurasi was doing on Thursday. The White Mamba, you gotta respect it. Kyla Charles has been so important to this team off of the bench the last couple of games. She has outstanding basketball instincts. I mean, she can find the ball off of the glass and they're knocking down the jump shot. Hasn't put up a lot of big numbers on the offensive end, but that's a timely bucket. Yeah, and it's nice to have someone like that coming off the bench, part of that energy squad for Kurt Miller. Stevens off there, but I'd like to see Chicago work through Candace Parker 
in this fourth quarter on the offensive end. I feel like she has to touch it. She's been very good in the middle of the floor. Don't be afraid to go to that option. Candace Parker stuck on nine points. Stevens and Jonquil Jones getting physical underneath as the ball goes out of bounds. And there it is, your most search presented by Google. A career play off high and the, and so many of them are contested. And she will rip your heart out on the court, <laughs> but she is actually a really nice person right. off the court. I mean, we talk to her at practice. She's how you doing. She's great to her teammates. But don't step between the lines. Oh, no. Becomes, it's over. Becomes a totally different person, and she is also hilarious. That I'll, shot put shot that time didn't go in by Alyssa Thomas, but they went on a nice run since Alyssa Thomas came into the game. That's when Chicago saw Connecticut get a big run. Copper, keep on going. Oh, yeah, Copper now with 19. Just behind Quigley's 21. Quigley commits the foul on January. One thing that Breon January is going to bring is the physicality, but you see Alyssa Thomas helping there off. No one recovers to Copper. And that's where Chicago has gotten a lot of offense in the middle of the floor as Connecticut is trying to keep the ball on one side. They're not rotating well defensively back to the middle. Copper three threes as well on her line this afternoon, but her team is down five. With some stops. John Paul Jones. Golly. Around the horn and then Copper using the quicks. Where is Connecticut? Copper's been knocking down buckets left and right, and then she just gets left open. Shots of defense as the clock goes under six minutes. Thomas guarded by Parker, and then Vandersloot just took it away from her. Stevens blocked from behind by Jones, but the Sky get it back. Vandersloot. just hit her first shot of the game in this exciting playoff game and uh, missed her first five shots, Pam Ward, along with China Robinson, but Courtney Vandersloot, she can score zero points and still have a huge impact. Yeah, I mean, it is all about the assists for Courtney Vandersloot, and one thing that Kurt Miller told us is that she is the hardest player to disrupt in the league. Or anything is possible brought to you by Deloitte. How about 11 assists? I mean, she can get her teammates in position to score, and it doesn't always have to be fancy. It's just about time, delivery, opportunity, and against the pressure of Connecticut, they spend a lot of time talking about Courtney Vandersloot in practice. Despite it all, she is still running the show. 11 assists and only one turnover for Vandersloot. Team down now by three, Alyssa Thomas. Hits it. Roz Golden Wood was listening into Connecticut's last huddle. It's crunch time, and Coach Miller, Justin Powers, his entire team, he told them, no one be afraid to take a big shot. You guys are all superstars, all of you. Roz, he told us yesterday that he liked his team when they have more balance, when everyone is a scoring threat. So that goes along with the mentality that he wants his team to have, especially down the stretch in a game like this. Michael Jones, oh gosh, Azaree Stevens just got a piece of her hand to pick up the foul. So the Sun, this is the fourth time they have been tied up at one apiece in a best of five series and they have come up empty in the previous three. Will, will they turn the tide? This game is pivotal. 
Whoever wins will be one win away from the finals. Tipped out by John Paul Jones and Jasmine Thomas, cool as usual, sets it up. Alyssa Thomas using that body and the foul was called. And Courtney Vandersloot knows that she can't match Alyssa Thomas in terms of body size and physique, but she got to the spot defensively. She beat Alyssa Thomas there and took the charge. Thomas, such a physical player, very emotional player. Has made an impact off the bench, did so, so well in the decisive fourth quarter in game two. What a run! Parker into Stevens, that's her 16th beat changer, his game. And Stevens has been a better finisher in the second half than she was in the first half. Yeah, she had left a lot of points in the paint. Doing damage on the boards as well. Azaray Stevens has a double-double. Copper, full speed ahead. Arena on their feet. Up the floor for Copper. And the reason why that call didn't go Jasmine Thomas's way, she never got set. You see, she never got her shoulders squared in front of the ball handler. So she was in illegal defensive position and you cannot guard, you cannot pick up a charge if you're not legal. And with that free throw, Copper now with the new playoff high, career playoff high in scoring. That was a chancy pass by January in traffic. Snoop, Popper, finish! It's a 15 to two run for the sky. Do you want to run? Chicago wants to run. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA playoffs is presented by Google, official WNBA changemaker and proud advocate of women in sports. Coming up next, the second game of our WNBA playoff semifinal doubleheader on ABC. It's Kelsey Plum, the sixth player of the year. Scoring 25 points in both of her playoff games so far. Catch it over on ABC, but you don't want to turn away from this magic. How about Chicago? 15 points in just over three minutes to retake a lead after they fell behind by seven. Their defense certainly has gotten more stout. Their transition game going. Alyssa Thomas with the much needed bucket and much better patience by Connecticut there offensively. They had some bad possessions, turned the ball over. Chicago has 17 points off of turnovers for Connecticut. They've got to be very clear and intentional down the stretch of where they want to get the ball. Copper. Parker tried to keep it alive, but Jasmine Thomas was able to hunt it. Two and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Parker gambled on Thomas, who scored on her. Yeah, she's going to make you pay in that situation. you got to be sure. Back-to-back 15-point -back games for Thomas off the bench in this series. Coming back from the Achilles injury. Parker, three. Just a little bit too strong, but Vandersloot gets the offensive rebound. More energy from Chicago down the stretch than they had in game two. More 50-50 opportunities going their way. More hustle. Vandersloot with contact from Thomas, still able to finish. Inside two minutes to go now. Thomas and Parker. Parker Fowler. 
Courtney Vandersloot really taking over this game down the stretch. Sees an open lane, takes a bump from Jasmine Thomas, and we keep talking about how great of a defender Jasmine Thomas is, but she doesn't get under that screen in time. And if that baseline help by Bonner was there, could have made a difference, but it wasn't. Melissa Thomas now one of three from the line. She has scored the last six points for the Sun. Look at seven straight Alyssa Thomas points to get them to within three. Nine of the 16 this quarter, something about the fourth quarter with Alyssa Thomas. She had 10 points in the fourth quarter in game two. Copper working on Bonner who blocked it. Great defense by Bonner at the rim to take that look away from Copper. She has been hot. Jasmine Thomas gets it to Alyssa, who puts it in over Parker. And that's a lower percentage shot for Alyssa Thomas. She is not a jump shooter, but it's all about her will to win. She is a playmaker. And once again, Alyssa Thomas, incredible. Welcome back to Chicago. The Sky have a one-point lead. It has everything to do with the play of Kalia Copper. 26 points, 9 for 14 from the field. She does it all. She hits the three. She runs the floor. She's the energy player. She's the composure, the poise, the fire. Everything for Chicago. The 6-1 wing out of Rutgers has had an incredible game today. And has her team in position right now with a one-point lead in the ball in the sky hands. Coming to Chicago, part of the Elena Deladon trade that sent her to Washington. Chicago, one point lead and the ball. The winner takes a two game to one lead in this best of five. Vandersloot letting some seconds tick off the clock. Takes it, makes it! Wow. A slow scoring start for Vandersloot, but she's got six points in this quarter and 13 total assists. And now Quigley in January got a little tangled up. Connecticut schemes on Vandersloot have not worked. Kurt Miller wanted crowded. He wanted bodies around her. Jasmine Thomas gets hit with a screen, and Jonquel Jones doesn't recover. Actually, no one does to help Jasmine Thomas Vandersloot showing leadership. Quigley's foul sends January with a free throw line. Her first trip. She's going to get to play. Um, as this series continues on Wednesday here in Chicago. Gets them both. Chicago takes a timeout. We will take a quick one as well. Welcome back to Chicago. Pam Ward, LaChina Robinson, Roz Goldman Wooday here across the court. What a game this has been. So what does James Wade and his folks need to do with the ball? Well, what's happened in the last few possessions is Connecticut has not been able to guard the ball screen with Courtney Vandersloot. And I would look to just keep putting it in her hands until they stop it. Vandersloot into Parker could not handle it I think Parker was getting in position for the rebound wasn't expecting it but you always have to be expecting it when it comes to Courtney Vandersloot gets the pass up high and it looked like it hit the bottom of the bucket a little bit and then bounced off of Parker's it was a well-placed pass but because they took that shot early, there's still a difference between shot clock and game clock. So almost like a two-for-one situation, they will get the ball back here. An opportunity for Connecticut. 
to take the lead. Fargo does not have any fouls to give. Connecticut down to one timeout. And if you're Connecticut, Alyssa Thomas, whatever you've got to do to get her some isolation space here, I would do that. Now, Dewana Bonner has also been very good, but I'm calling Alyssa Thomas's number here if I'm the son. Thomas has 11 points in this quarter, had a string of nine in a row at one point. Thomas with the ball, picked up a dribble, gets it to Jasmine Thomas. Here she is. Off balance and a rebound. Huge rebound for Parker, who is fouled. What you thought they should do, LaChina, Alyssa Thomas with a chance, and it almost went in. Candace Parker here forcing the jump shot. And again, that's a lower percentage shot for Alyssa Thomas. She has hit that, but I thought that time she was covered up. I would have liked to see Thomas take it to the rim and try to draw some contact. Very good at drawing contact. They did have a foul to give. Connecticut and you just saw it. It was called on Alyssa Thomas. 18 points off the bench for Thomas and now 16.8 seconds left to go. Congo got to hold on to the ball. And Connecticut's a, a team that can get steals. I mean, they'll gamble. They've got some quickness, some length. Third in the league in steals during the regular season. Big time length with Dewana Bonner at 6'4", Jones at 6'6", at least. But a huge possession. With the timeout, they advance it into the front court. They've got to get it in, if not a quick foul by Connecticut. Topper in the backcourt right now, guarded by Bonner. Vandersloot. Most important thing, got it in, Quigley. Got to take it away, Jasmine Thomas up to Breon January. Misses the reverse, rebound Vandersloot. Frenetic action with the steal and then the opportunity for January. This couldn't have gone better for Connecticut. Jasmine Thomas with the tip, and then January just overshot the reverse layup. I feel like she could have taken her time and gone right in. I mean, she she was all by herself, and I don't know if she just, she was middle of the basket, so felt like she had to choose a side, but she just made that finish more difficult than it really needed to be. And now Vandersloot misses the first free throw. Connecticut still has a timeout. You always say you try to get a steal, and if not, you've got a foul. And look at the defense of Connecticut. Gets it out to Breon January, and she just didn't have any basket awareness. And that's a tough one. Had she gone to that right side, her, her face shows the agony of it. Uh, the tried the reverse, which is trickier, and it just would not go down. So Connecticut has just burned its final timeout. They're only down by two. And with the timeout, we'll be able to inbound in the front court. AT again? You got to get something going to the basket. You got to assume that Chicago is going to try to cover Alyssa Thomas so you get to her if you can, but you have very capable playmaking ability in Jasmine Thomas. And very good playmaking ability in Dewana Bonner. And eight seconds is a lot of time. And they have the most valuable player in John Quell Jones. Only 10 points. Does have nine rebounds. So here we go. January inbounds. Alyssa Thomas guarded by Parker. Spins blocked.
It started with the initial defense here on Alyssa Thomas. Bothering of the shot by Parker and then the rebound. It looked clean from my angle on the take by Thomas. And then Parker gets it in time for the rebound. Parker's first trip to the free throw line. And with that, Candace has a double-double. And Parker told us coming into the game, when I won a championship in 2016, it came down to my ability to rebound the basketball. She has done that and did that to finish off that possession. Yeah, I got a couple of big ones down the stretch. And the Chicago Sky pulled off Connecticut to win 86-83. The top seed, Connecticut Sun, now on the ropes, one loss away from elimination. I think Connecticut's going to go back. They're going to look at the final minute of this game and look at all of the missed opportunities. And you got to credit Chicago. I mean, defensively yeah. and on the glass, they did what they had needed to do, which did not happen at the end of game two. All of those possessions, those rebounds, those stops, they went Connecticut's way. So Chicago gets the win. Kalia Copper with a new playoff career high in scoring. Here she is with Roz. Kalia, this was back and forth. You threw a punch, then they punched back. What was it like to keep swinging in this battle? It felt so good. You know, the atmosphere was really <laughs> The atmosphere was so crazy. And uh, my team just kept believing in me, and we just needed to stay together. And that's what we did. Candace Parker just came over and said, you're just a kid from North Philly. How does that inform the way you play out here? Man, I'm going I'm going to go take everything out there. Anything, I'm going to go take it. I'm going to go take it. How much responsibility at this point in your career with SLU, with Candace Parker, you still feel you need to bring to the game every time? I just know consistently I got to bring that energy and that toughness to this team. You know, we felt like last game we got a little bit pumped, but I had to let my team know, like, that's not us. That's not our identity. And when I bring that energy and bring that toughness, they all bring it too. When it came down to it in the fourth quarter, how did you guys lean in on your defense to change this game? We knew we had to make adjustments. You know, uh, they started scoring off our hedges, so we just made adjustments and communicated, over-communicated, and um, that's what playoff, playoff basketball is about. How different is the team that we're watching right now from the Chicago Sky of the regular season? We locked in. Uh, it's, it's a new season, and <laughs> we're still breathing. So uh, we just locked in on this playoff, playoff run that we're making in, uh, just trying to prove the Dodgers wrong. All right, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. So Kalia Copper and the Chicago Sky as the number six seed are one win away from a trip to the finals and the leading scores. Boy, uh, Azaree Stevens really came along in the second half. You talked about Parker with the double-double coming up with some huge rebounds. And uh, the Chicago Sky, boy, this is a, a Connecticut team that lost only six games during the regular season, and they've now lost four of those games to this to this team between the regular season and here. So what are we looking at now as we head towards Wednesday? I mean, the balance that we just saw for Chicago on the offensive end meant everything. Even Allie Quigley spreading the four. The three-point line was kind to Chicago. But again, I go back to the energy. That is what Connecticut thrives off. And Chicago took that from them in this game, getting the 50-50 possessions, getting rebounds to finish off their defense, all of the little things that set you apart at this time of the year. And uh, we saw the defense, as you said, ramp up for them and uh, the offense where Courtney Vandersloot uh, uh, didn't score until the fourth quarter then hit a couple of big ones. She's a big time playmaker and Courtney Vandersloot was the maestro when Chicago needed her. When they needed possession, they went to her leadership. John Quell Jones and company will see them again on Wednesday in Chicago as the Sky win at 86-83 for China Robinson and Roscoe Amude. I'm Pam Ward saying so long from Chicago.